Number 10, Zombie Star. While the idea of a human coming back to life and hunting for brains is spooky, to me the knowledge that dead stars can do the same, even the eating each other part, is both scary and exciting. This is Tycho, a former white dwarf, which is a star that has quote, died and gone supernova, exploding into a fantastic show of cosmic energy and matter with the power and brightness of a billion suns. And usually a white dwarf will stay dead, but not in a binary system where there's more than one star at the center. Sometimes these previously deceased stars can come back to life. And they do this by feeding off the energy and material from their neighboring star and powering themselves back up, not unlike a zombie eating somebody's brains. Scientists believe that this may have to do with what they call dark energy as well, which theoretically makes up about three quarters of our universe. But since we have yet to truly detect or understand it, these zombie stars will remain a mystery. But they look super cool, right? Number nine, Alien Bones. Captured on August 14th, 2014 by the Curiosity rover, this photo appears to show something on the surface of Mars that could chill you to the bone, a femur on the surface of the red planet. Many conspiracy theorists and alien enthusiasts alike hopped onto this to show it as proof that there was once life on Mars, or even that humans had been there before on some sort of secret mission that went awry. NASA has gone on the record to say that it's not a thigh bone, but just a rock that happened to be shaped that way after erosion from wind or water, which we have proven existed at one point, but come on. If it really was a bone, do you think that they'd tell us? Though I'm inclined to go with the scientists on this one, it would be kind of cool if we had proof of aliens on Mars. If you think there are aliens out there, hit the like and subscribe buttons to help us bring you the most amazing videos on them. Number eight, Eye of Sauron. The Rings of Power just finished its first season as I'm recording this video. And since I still have Tolkien on the brain, this photo of the Fomalhaut system made the cut. A relatively young system at 440 million years old, for comparison, our sun is about 4.5 billion years old, Fomalhaut and its surroundings surrounding disk of space dust have been the subject of a lot of controversy in the astronomical community. The images captured interest scientists not only because they look like they came straight from Mordor, but because of the zombie planet that has been tricky to find. The photos taken show that the dust ring is not centered around the star, but is shifted and elongated into the eye shape, which indicates something of large mass on the outer parts of the system, which scientists believed could be a Saturn-sized planet. Investigations have been conflicting over the past few years, with researchers believing on and off that the planet exists, and with Hubble images being inconclusive, which is why we call it a zombie planet, because it keeps coming back to life in a way amongst researchers. The system may have gotten its strange ring shape from all of the comet activity as well, with over 2,000 comet impacts daily, many of those comets being over one kilometer wide. That would definitely kick up a lot of dust, so one does not simply walk into Fulmahut. Number seven, Sunken. Okay, I threw this one in because it's currently spooky season while I record this, and having a jack o' lantern turned sun on the list couldn't be passed up. In 2014, the Solar Dynamics Observatory captured this creepy photo of the sun smiling right at us, like its features had been carved right out of a pumpkin. Solar flares and activity on the sun can be quite unpredictable, and the fact that it lined up to look like this is pretty cool. I just hope that there isn't some giant alien up there carving into our sun to decorate their intergalactic porch. But if that's the case, what are we going to dress up Earth as? If Earth had a Halloween costume, what would it be? Let me know in the comments. Number 6, Greater Pumpkin Galaxy. Galaxies. Sticking with the Halloween theme, 120 million light years away in the Canis Major constellation, these two galaxies, called NGC 2292 and 2293, have earned a much cooler name, the Greater Pumpkin Galaxies. Because of their orange color and the fact that they look like a jack-o'-lantern, these galaxies doomed to collide in what we will see as slow motion make for a pretty spectacular image. Not to mention that NASA released the photos on Halloween a few years ago. Though it may be a fun Halloween-themed image, there is a scary truth about them. There on track to collide with each other. And as the two galaxies draw closer, they begin to spin around one another and could eventually form one single spiral galaxy. But when that happens, there will be some cosmic consequences. Things smashing into each other at ludicrous speeds and exploding out into the darkness with the force of many nuclear bombs. But we don't actually know what will happen until it does. While some may say it reminds them of the Great Pumpkin, I would say that it looks more like a 100,000 light year across Jack Skellington. Number five, smooth moon. When we think of moons, in the sky or like how other planets have other moons, we think of them as our own. 
Just a big ball of cheese in the sky. A big sphere, it's got craters, it's pale. We get it, right? Well, as we've seen so far in this list, some moons can look like the Death Star, and some moons can look like chewed gum, apparently. Saturn's small moon, Atlas, looks like a UFO. It's not a sphere at all. It literally has the shape of a UFO. How scary is that? NASA's Cassini spacecraft caught this image back in 2017, and it almost looks like two moons have crashed into one another, and then now it has a ring-like edge to it. When new photos came back after discovering this moon way back in 1980, scientists were surprised that this moon is actually really smooth. In 4K, they're like, oh, it's not even the pixels, it's actually really smooth. A smooth moon, you say? <laughs> Let me take a look here. This little smooth moon in the sky, little pervert. Number four, dead galaxies. This one sounds scary, dead galaxies. Guardians of the dead galaxy. New research from NASA, including the Hubble Space Telescope, along with the Atacama Large Millimeter Submillimeter Array in Northern Chile, they found six different dead galaxies in total. They're all like, that's one, that's two, and they're like, hey, we found four, all dead, horrifying. How does this happen? Let's look into it. These dead galaxies had run out of the cold hydrogen needed to make stars, and without the fuel for new stars, these galaxies were basically running on nothing at that point. It's kind of like when your car battery dies, only this is on a cosmic scale. This discovery led us to new questions we didn't even know we had. Like what led to these galaxies to die anyways? What happened to all the cold gas in them so early on? These six galaxies lived fast and hot lives, but we aren't sure what went wrong quite yet. Lead author and assistant professor of astronomy at the University of Massachusetts, Kate Whitaker, she proposed several potential explanations and gave us insight onto the future of the studies, which she said, did a supermassive black hole in the galaxy center turn on and heat up all the gas? If so, the gas could still be out there, but now it's just cold. We need Thanos to come back and just, you know, start this fire up, just a big, someone get a big lighter and just go and just light it back up. Alas, new life. Is that Thor? Welcome back. Number three, solar flares. Our lives literally revolve around the sun. It blesses us with life energy, solar rotation, and most importantly, tan lines, obviously. But sometimes she acts up. Sometimes she gets a little cray cray. Sometimes she gets a little and then she spurts out lava and scares us all. Sometimes she creates these powerful magnetic fields that create sunspots larger than our entire planet. Yep, like I said, she's moody. This creates a stream of radiation. It's called solar wind. Now, normally this is a beautiful event to see. We have many photos of it now. The northern lights happen because of Earth's magnetic field reacting to this specific radiation. Beautiful, but Really scary when you think about it. This past October, a large solar flare was spotted, and then three days later, it finally hit Earth. The geomagnetic storm reached category G2, which out of five is pretty strong, especially when you look at it as a, you know, on a planetary scale. The biggest solar event was back in 1859. It's called the Carrington Event. It was strong enough to disrupt telegraph communications, even shocking, literally shocking, some telegraph operators. Like if that happens again, and it's even stronger this time, we're looking at huge power outages on a massive scale. Imagine talking to someone on your iPhone and it blows up. Right in the middle of Avatar 2, boom, blackout. Life as we know it is now meaningless. We're all crying in public. Number two, the space crab. Is the multiverse collapsing? What, what is this? The appropriately named Space Crab Nebula was discovered back in 1054. Yeah, way back then, astronomers looked into the sky and saw this new bright star. They saw it during daytime. That's how they knew something was up. What they were observing at the time was a supernova explosion. How spectacular is that? This was when the Crab Nebula was born. It's not too far away either. It's just a mere, you know, 6,500 light years tucked away in the constellation Taurus. If you're a Taurus, you're watching, you're like, oh, no way, I'm a Libra. I'm like, get out of here. What do you know? The image of the space crab here was captured over the course of three months. NASA put together 24 exposures captured by, of course, our Hubble. The orange glow we see, those are literally star remains, just large pockets of hydrogen. The interesting part here with the space crab is back in 2005, over the course of 10 Hubble exposures from September to November, these waves can be seen expanding outwards, waves coming from the nebula's pulsar. Space is so scary. We have one moon to worry about here. Meanwhile, all of this is going on in our space neighborhood. I'm terrified. And finally, number one, mystery wave. More waves coming in hot, really hot this time around. If you've seen Interstellar, this next one should hit close to home. I'm not a fan of wave pools or waves in general. My stupid head just bobbing around in the ocean, that's, that's peril, that's, that's a nightmare situation. I can't swim too well. I don't know, I'm too lanky. I'm like a piece of seaweed floating around. The largest wave ever seen in the entire solar system, of course, I had to save this one for last. On a planet a little closer to the sun, Venus, the pressure in the atmosphere can cause some massive waves. Back in 2015, a Japanese spacecraft zoomed by and caught this phenomena. Usually clouds there will move around 100 meters a second, but these clouds, these massive ripples, stayed in the same place for four days, way above the ground level also. They were just like, huh? 
and then they got stuck there. Due to a runaway greenhouse effect, temperatures on Venus hit around 460 degrees Celsius. So this wave may have been powerful enough to change the climate for those four days. Pretty crazy. I feel like Canada, we get a lot of weather changes, but this, this is next level. Number 10, the Venus wave. Spotted by the Akatsuki spacecraft in 2015, a massive wave was observed traveling across the surface of Venus. Stretching for 10,000 kilometers, the wave continued up until Venus's cloud tops, where it suddenly became stationary. It is uh, good to note that the average traveling speed of clouds in Venus upper atmosphere roughly caps out at about 100 meters per second. The source of the wave is undetermined, with theories being tossed around that it might have been caused by a rogue gravity wave, which itself would have been caused by the displacement of a fluid from its preferred position. Uh, as Venus is an extremely volatile planet, and no research craft has survived for longer than a couple of minutes on its surface, these claims are difficult to prove, and the secrets of this blue dot remain hidden beneath its swirling clouds. Number 9. Oumuamua On October 19th, 2017, an object was sighted from the University of Hawaii. Classified as a comet, the object is thin and flat, or roughly a quarter of a mile long. But more importantly, it was picking up speed. If you don't remember middle school science, an object in motion remains in motion unless acted upon by an object of similar or equal mass. In space, because there is nothing to act upon the object to slow it down, any velocity will be kept until impact. But an increase in velocity doesn't make sense without propellant. So what was moving Oumuamua? Well, well, the theory goes that it might contain a chunk of solid hydrogen, which was slowly falling off of the object's surface and allowing for an increase in speed. However, studying the comet is completely impossible, as it's the first observed object to fly into our system and then fly back out. So this theory is just kind of unconfirmed, and we may never know where the Traveler came from, nor where it did go. Number 8. PSO J3 18. 0.5-22. Discovered yet again by our friends at the University of Hawaii, PSO J318.5-22 is a rogue planet floating through space without a star for it to orbit. It's estimated to be roughly the size of Jupiter, but as to where it came from, no one has a clue. Theories about some hoping that it may have been kicked away from its home star due to a gravitational anomaly, but who can say? None but the rogue planet, no. Number seven, the diamond planet. Discovered in 2004, Janssen is an exoplanet close to the star Cancri A. Years later, the planet was determined to be a carbon planet, a theoretical type of planet with more carbon than oxygen. As a result of this, it is theorized, due to the method of which diamonds are created, that within Janssen could lie an absolute abundance of diamonds. However, getting to it would be difficult. See, Janssen's proximity to the sun is so small that average temperatures are estimated to be around uh, 17,000 degrees Celsius. So good luck getting close enough to snag some stones. Honestly, the scariest thing to me is that someone might actually try this, for reasons that I doubt even the greatest minds could truly comprehend, beyond, I guess, greed. Number 6. The Vampire Star Halloween's over, but the true horror fans know that it lasts all year long. Not just limited to our solar system, the existence of Hammer Horror classic monsters has clearly reached the stars, specifically symbiotic stars. See, when two stars are formed in proximity to one another, their mass will draw in the hydrogen from the other star, which will deplete its life, turning it into a white dwarf. From there, the white dwarf will go supernova, annihilating both in the process. What scientists have difficulty explaining is how such celestial entities exist, and worst of all, how some have survived the supernova. It's hypothesized that Betelgeuse, the star, not the ghost, is what's called a cannibal star. And before we observed it, Betelgeuse must have sucked the life out of another star. So why can we still see Betelgeuse today, despite the fact that the other star would have gone nova? 
Wait, did I say it three times? Number five, the face of Mars. This freaky famous photo was taken by the Viking 1 orbiter in 1976 and shows us what is very clearly a face embedded in the surface of Mars. A massive one at that, judging by the scale of what's around it. It very clearly has two eyes, a nose, and a mouth. Uncanny, really. Especially for being what NASA has called a cosmic coincidence. Because with enough time and space, literally anything can happen. When investigated again in 2001 with a better camera, it was not to be seen. Was it just a mound of rocks and dirt that was blown or moved away, or was it something more sin or was it something more sinister? Watching us from the red planet, not knowing that we were finally looking back. Number four, black hole in the Milky Way. Black holes, one of the biggest driving forces in the cosmos. These places of pure darkness were once stars that shone bright in the sky, but when they died, instead of going supernova and exploding into a blast of color and energy, they collapsed in on themselves, creating a singularity so dense that it sucks everything around it in, with a force that nothing can escape, not even light. And while this may sound scary, they are incredibly necessary for our understanding of the universe to function. In fact, there are a few in our galaxy, but the biggest is Sagittarius A, the supermassive black hole at the center of the Milky Way. This is the second image ever captured of a black hole, and it's insane that we've developed the technology to be able to find and photograph them. Sag A sits at the center of our galaxy and is the reason why it spins and has its signature spiral shape. But the scary part is that it is not only spinning our galaxy, but consuming it, adding one more way that our galaxy can meet its demise. Not sure I'd rather that or colliding with another galaxy. Either way, none of us are going to be around to see it. Number three, Hand of God. This is what's known as a pulsar wind nebula, and what you're seeing is a cloud of material that was ejected from a dying star, captured by X-ray telescopes functioning at different energy levels. Lower energy detections appearing in red and green, and higher ones in blue. While we can explain what this stellar specter is made of, we can't quite figure out why it takes the shape it does, and NASA is still wondering if the pulsar particles are interacting in a specific way to make it look like a hand. When the new readings were taken, the ones appearing blue, they realized that one part of the hand is actually shrinking at a different speed than the rest, implying that the two areas were physically different, and making us all wonder what the hand is reaching towards. Number two, Ghost Nebula. Known formally as SH2-136, really rolls off the tongue. This reflection nebula has some pretty startling shapes appearing within it. A reflection nebula does exactly what you think. It reflects light from nearby stars and galaxies. The energy from stars nearby is not strong enough to ionize the gas of the nebula, but it is enough enough to illuminate the dust and make it visible to us. Looking at the picture, it's a no-brainer why it's earned its much cooler name, the Ghost Nebula. You can see little figures waving from the edge of the space cloud. They even appear to have horns. I'm not sure what that's about, but I'm here for it. Give me all the spooky space specters. Again, this is just one of those cosmic coincidences that we can't explain, and that if we existed at any other place in the universe, we may not see. So we're pretty lucky, I guess. But let's hope our luck holds out for our final entry. Number one, roaming black holes. Now, I told you about black holes, those things that suck in and destroy anything that comes near, even light, with no chance to escape. But they are pretty detectable, and we should be able to avoid them since they're such a huge cosmic entity, right? Well, what if I told you that there are many out there that are near impossible detect? because they're moving. That's right, known as roaming black holes, these death spheres fly through our universe devouring everything in their path. Only detectable by fluctuations in mass and light, they were most likely two black holes that attracted each other, then slingshotted off one another and were flung out into space. But here's the kicker, the Hubble telescope actually detected one closer than anyone would want, in our own Milky Way. While pointed near the center of the galaxy at Sagittarius A, a fluctuation in light and space shows that we may have one of these devouring our galaxy, and we would never see it coming until it was too late. So there you go, one of my, and possibly now one of your fears, roaming black holes. Space is crazy and terrifying. It is absolutely baffling and will never cease to impress me the technology and knowledge we have developed in our time as a species to investigate beyond our own planet. Especially since, at the end of the day, we're all just monkeys with car keys. Kicking off the list at number 10, the Pluto Slug. Back in January 2016, the New Horizons probe was sending tons of new information back from our little ex-planet, Pluto. 
The icy plain shows a series of lines, almost like these giant space slugs, dare I say, are slowly moving across the surface of the planet. Check it out. It reminds me of the episode of SpongeBob, where the gang, you know, rides a rock across the ocean floor. Maybe Patrick and SpongeBob are delivering a pizza on Pluto, okay? They could be just in the weeds, they could be busy. This icy area of the dwarf planet is called the Sputnik Planum. Scientists believe so far the reason for all these lines is that the planet is breathing in a way. If that sounds creepy, it's because it kind of is. The planet's cooling and heating and it's kind of moving around, but we'll leave some room open for space slugs because you know what, at this day and age, you never know. I've seen enough Avenger movies. I'm like, mm, could be space worms. Number nine, Mima's moon. A long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Just kidding, this one's actually really close. It's Saturn, it's right, right there. Saturn is known for having a plethora of moons. Saturn in total has 82 moons, including this one, Mimas. A moon that looks oddly familiar. Why do I feel like it's gonna just blast us all the smithereens? Why do I feel like that's gonna happen? Is that the Death Star? Is this thing pointing at Earth? Which way is it pointing here? That's, that really matters. Saturn's smallest innermost moon is causing quite the stir here on Earth. About a month ago, researchers discovered that this moon has a bit of a wobble to it, almost like a floating magic eight ball. Something is sloshing around inside. Its gravitational pull is a little off. It's kind of... It's just grooving around in the solar system, you know? Mima could potentially be housing a liquid ocean. Yep, we got more water in space. It's pretty close, too. If that was the case, everything we know about water and ocean life in space would have to be rewritten. Number eight, black hole helix. Imagine looking, peering through a telescope, and then you see this. I would throw up right into my telescope. This is a galactic jet. It shot out of a black hole at the center of the M87 galaxy. It's pretty scary looking. This helix shot out a whopping 8,000 light years. Yeah, it's pretty far. That's so far I can't even fathom how far that is. You know, like my brain won't allow me to really picture that. This sounds like a threat, really, but I'll remind you that the M87 galaxy is 55 million light years away from us. So we're not gonna get any galactic jet on our hands anytime soon, know what I mean? But just how does something like this happen? Astronomers in New Mexico discover that this massive jet is caused by a corkscrew-shaped magnetic field. What in the witchcraft, like what? Like a space undertow made out of gravity. That doesn't sound jarring at all. According to the National Radio Astronomy Observatory, this is the longest magnetic fields ever found in a galactic jet. Which is fine, that's the first time I've heard of that. I'm like, that's, you can take that rain, enjoy it. That's, we're not gonna try and beat you. It's stuff like this where I ask myself why I'm worrying about a phone bill. Humans are so tiny compared to this, it's insane. We don't matter. Hey, n uh, number eight, we don't matter. Hit that thumbs up. Number seven. Jupiter's clouds. We've all seen and heard of Jupiter's big red spot. That's just a nightmare in itself. It's so big, always going, no idea why. Can't even think about it. But when NASA's Juno spacecraft passed the Goliath back in 2017, it captured something almost just as interesting, if not more, dare I say. Jupiter's clouds. It feels like you can just put your arm out and touch the silky space sky. It's beautiful, but that's about 20,000 kilometers away. It's also quite scary. This big ball of hydrogen is quite mysterious below these clouds. So far, NASA has found lightning higher up than they ever thought it could go. We've also found constant storms at both the North and South Pole, and winds so powerful that the planet's magnetic fields are literally being moved around. That's how strong the wind is. Your skin would just blow off. You'd be a skeleton just standing there. Beautiful, mysterious, and deadly. We love space on MA10. Number six, Mars trees. This looks like moldy bread almost. What in the hell? What are we looking at here? Is this actually a photo, a real photo from Mars? Are those trees? There's not a chance here. Matt Damon grew potatoes on Mars in the movie The Martian, but I don't think he can grow any pine trees anytime soon. What you're looking at here is still pretty insane. Due to the evaporation of carbon dioxide frost, dark sand is sliding down the frosted side of the dune, so it makes it look like there's trees on the planet Mars. Sun-heated carbon dioxide ice, that's just, I, I read that and I go, what? What does that even mean? Where do I start with this? We thought we found a giant alien back in 1976 when NASA's Viking 1 flew by and it looked like a face was in the planet. Remember that? It looks like a Jabberwocky. It's just lying getting a suntan. This one here is in an optical illusion. It's just weird space science. Number five, the huge LQG. Quasars are extremely supermassive black holes that are surrounded by accretion disks, which then release their generation of a beam as pure radiation. We'll get into that later. Cool. 
and slightly terrifying, right? Well, the huge LQG is made up of a cluster of 74 quasars. 74. Originally believed to be impossible, this massive cluster of black holes and radiation defies both science and sense just by its existence. The huge LQG has a rough span of 4 billion light years, easily the largest structure in the universe, and by far larger than our own. Number 4. The Boots Void. Do you know what's more terrifying than something? Nothing. And the Boots Void is just that. Nothing. A region of space where there is simply nothing. And to be clear, this isn't Barnard 68, the dark nebula that eats light. No, no, no. This is just nothing. Several galaxies do surround it, but none exist within its center. There's nothing within the void. There may never have been, and there maybe never will be. Or maybe there's just something keeping everything else out. Number 3. The Incoming Mega Comet Did you know that every year 17,000 meteorites fall to Earth? Now, most of these just burn up in the atmosphere, usually long before they're visible. Uh, the ones that can be seen are the ones that are actually dubbed meteors. But what if a meteor couldn't burn up in the atmosphere? Spotted by the Hubble telescope, the comet Bernard Dinelli Bernstein is currently flying right towards us at around 72,000 miles per hour. 60 miles across, the meteor is roughly half the theorized size of the asteroid response responsible for ending the age of the dinosaurs. But nevertheless, this cosmic catastrophe could cause considerable consternation were it to collide with our rock. So, when does it get here? Well, don't bother looking up because it, it isn't going to come within like a billion miles of us. Even so, if it changes course even slightly, we could be looking at a pretty dark future. Number 2. Gamma Ray Bursts There's a distinct beauty to black holes, their swirling light collapsing into a mass so dense as to erase light itself. Their byproducts are gamma ray bursts, these streams of light that fire out of what would be visualized as the top and bottom of the black hole. It sort of looks like a gyroscope, only one that, you know, defies physics and erases matter. Well, as it turns out, even the most beautiful parts of this flower can be its deadliest, as gamma ray bursts are explosions of high intensity radiation that could cook anything in its way in a matter of seconds. So it's a good thing that, you know, stars aren't dying out regularly, and even better that our planet has never been hit by a gamma ray burst before, oh wait, it actually totally was. Well, the effects wouldn't exactly be, you know, death star adjacent, if Close enough, the radiation would absolutely be lethal, and close in terms of spatial proximity could be anywhere, honestly. Comforting thought. Number 1. The CMB Cold Spot The CMB Cold Spot was discovered by the Wilkinson Microwave Anisotropy Probe, a device primarily constructed to measure cosmic background radiation and test the theory of the Big Bang. The Cold Spot was added to a structure that is titled, I'm not joking, the Axis of Evil, a name given to any anomaly that deviates from the Copernican principle, far larger than the boot's void, temperatures within the cold spot are around 0.00007 Kelvin. The average in space, of course, is about 2.7 Kelvin. What caused the creation of the cold spot is unknown, but physicist Laura Mersini Houghton claimed that it could be an imprint from a parallel universe. 